In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to create this pretty cool Polaroid slideshow inside After Effects. But if you guys want a completed template that you can fit up to 100 photos in, be sure to join my Patreon. The link down is in the video description. So to get started, we're first gonna create a photo. To do that, go to Composition, New Composition, name it Photo 001. And then what we're actually gonna do is change the width to 1000 and the height to 1200. I'm gonna leave frame rate at 29.97 and the duration I'm actually gonna to change to 10 seconds long. Then click OK. And probably the best way to actually create your frame is to actually just Google search, you know, a Polaroid frame. So I just search this and what I'm gonna do is just take a screenshot of this and import it into After Effects. So I'm just gonna import this here, drag it to my timeline. And then what I'm gonna do is right click on it, go to transform and fit to comp height. So now we have kind of a basis to actually draw our frame around. And what we're gonna to do to actually make the frame is create it from a solid and then actually draw a mask and subtract it. That way we kind of create that white Polaroid frame look. To do that, go to the layer new solid and we'll name this frame. Click on make comp size, make sure the color is white and then click okay. Then click and drag this underneath our screenshot. Be sure that the frame is selected and what you'll wanna do is actually grab the rectangle tool and then draw around the actual frame of the screenshot here, let go. And then we can actually click on the screenshot layer, hit delete, and now we have just the frame. And then under mask one next to it, click on the drop down and click subtract. This will actually subtract it. And when we toggle transparency, you'll notice that we actually have transparency in that area in the mask there. Now when we zoom in, we'll notice that it's a little bit off. So what you can do is actually click on the mask itself, grab your selection tool, and just kind of refine this to kind of get centered here, and that looks pretty good. All right, so we have our first photo, but we'll want to duplicate this several times to actually, for as many photos as we want. So I'm just gonna do this nine times, so hit Command-D or Control-D on a PC till we have 10 of them. Then what I'm actually gonna do is organize our assets. So I'm gonna create the new folders button and create a comps folder and then I'm gonna create a new folder again and name this Photos. Then I'm gonna click on the first photo, hold down Shift, select Photo 10, and then just drag these into our Photos folder. So now all of our photos are in here. Next, let's actually add our photos to our photos. So I'm just gonna double click and import some stock photos that I have. And to do it, just untwirl your Photos folder and then just drag in your first photo here Hit S on your keyboard to bring up scale, size it down accordingly, and you can click and drag to kind of reposition them into your photo compositions. And basically just do this for all of your photos that you want to add to your slideshow here. I'm gonna speed this up so that we have all 10 created. After you have all of your photos added to your photos compositions, the next thing we're gonna do is actually create the scenes that the photos live in. And this is really where you can animate the camera and really stylize your slideshow. To do that, I'm gonna collapse the Photos folder, click on the Comps folder, I'm gonna create a new folder called Scenes. And now I'm gonna create a new composition by going up to Composition, New Composition, and I'll name the Scene 01. I'm gonna change the width to 1920 and the height to 1080. I'm gonna leave frame rate at 29.9, and duration I'm gonna leave at 10 seconds, and then click OK. So first, let's do the background. One website I really like to use is called Texture Labs. If you go to texturelabs.org, you'll notice if you scroll down to the left side, there is a wood section and you can click on that and you have a lot of cool wood textures that you can download to kind of give it a, like a wooden coffee table or type of wall look. In this example, I'm gonna use this one. So I'm gonna click the download button next to extra large. Then I'm just gonna import this into After Effects and then drag it to our timeline here. Then I'm gonna click S on our keyboard to scale it down a little bit. You can zoom out and kind of reposition this to, you know, something that looks appealing here. Next, let's actually add our photos. This is really up to you, however many photos you want on a scene. You know, in my Patreon template, I use, you know, two, three, four. There's a lot of different variations in that template. But in this case, I'm just going to add two to keep it simple for just to show you guys how to set this up. So I'm going to just click and drag this first photo in. Just hit S on your keyboard. You can scale it down can click R on your keyboard to rotate it, kind of rotate it, maybe put it to the right side. Then I'm gonna click on the second photo, drag this down. I'm gonna actually put it underneath photo one. I'm gonna click S on my keyboard, scale it down, hit R on the keyboard and rotate it. 
Then you can actually click and drag this as well to kind of reposition these as you wish. There's no direct science behind this. It's really up to you however you want to design this. Next, let's actually add a 3D camera to actually animate the position of the actual scene. So first, let's change these layers to a 3D layer by clicking this cube button. Now I'll change these layers to 3D layers. Now I'll just click out into this empty space and hit U to collapse. Next, to create a new 3D camera, we're gonna go up to Layer New Camera. And if you're new to cameras, basically what a camera is, it's you know as if you know this camera right here. If you actually move it, you know the actual environment changes, and that's really how it affects the layers inside After Effects, 3D layers specifically. Then if you click OK, uh, what you'll notice in the top left, you'll have some camera controls. So you can you know, dolly towards, back, there's the pan tool, there's the orbit around tool. What I'll do first actually is click on the camera layer inside the timeline panel, click P to bring up the position. I'll keyframe the position, then I'll click A, and that's actually the point of interest of the camera, and I'll click the stopwatch as well. And I'll go forward about 15 frames. And then what I'll do is actually click U and U again to bring up those keyframes. I'll actually make keyframes by clicking on these diamonds here. And now we can actually edit the final position. I like this as the final position. If we go backwards back to the beginning, we can actually click on this orbit tool. And if we click and drag in the composition window, you, you can see that we kind of create a pretty cool looking effect where we can actually mimic like 3D movement. And if we click like on the dolly tool, we can actually dolly forward. So maybe we do like a zoom out type of thing and we click, click and play this back, you'll notice that it kind of zooms out and it kind of lands there. Then at the end, what we can do is go to nine seconds, 15 frames. Maybe we zoom out a little bit, maybe add some type of camera movement here. And then at the end, maybe we zoom back in or something, maybe into the second photo. Then we can actually grab our pan tool, click and drag that. So that way it kind of zooms in and this will essentially fade into the second scene which I'll show you later in this tutorial. You can also easy ease these keyframes by just marquee selecting them or right clicking and going to keyframe assistance. In this case I'm going to do ease in for the beginning ones here so it eases into the keyframe and then marquee select these last ones here right click on them and go to keyframe assistance easy ease out so it eases out of those keyframes. This is looking pretty good, but one way we can add more depth to our scene is actually by adding in lights. And lights very similar like to this set is like actually the lights hitting me and lighting me up. Um, we can add the same thing to this 3D scene inside After Effects. So to create a light, go up to Layer, New, Light. And there's a few different lights you can create. We'll first create a Spotlight light. Uh, so click on the drop down next to Light Type and go to Spot. You can actually change the color of the light. In this case, I'm going to leave it white and then click OK just to see what we have here. Now you'll notice that in the composition window, there's a cone that's actually showing where the light is. Now the easiest way to maneuver a light is just click on the light inside the timeline panel, hit P to bring up position. And this is really where you can actually reposition it. So I'm going to change the Z value quite a bit to kind of pull it back. Now you'll notice that we're actually just changing where the light is but you're not actually changing where the light's actually hidden. So you'll notice that, say if we hit A on our keyboard, that actually brings up point of interest. We can actually change where the light is actually being pointed at. So in this case, maybe we want to point at this first photo here. We can do that, then go back to P, drag this out a little bit, and that's looking pretty good. Now we can change more of the light's properties. And to do that, double tap A on your keyboard and they'll bring up light options. We can change the intensity, so if we want maybe a little bit dimmer, we can bring that down a little bit, maybe to 50 or so. Now this is a little dark, and what's nice about lights is you can add other lights to your scene. So the next light we'll add is actually an ambient light. And to do that, go to Layer, New Light, and we'll change the light type to ambient. And essentially what ambient is, is just like you know an overall light. I'm gonna change the intensity to 50, and what's nice, you can change the color. So you can actually change the color to maybe a nice warm color. If this is a family photo slideshow, you can actually add some warmth to your light. Click OK and click OK there. And now you'll notice that 
we have nice ambient light with a soft spotlight also on these photos here. And you'll notice that lights are uh, by nature 3D, so it matches, it follows the actual camera movement, which is really nice. Now one other cool thing you can add to this is some particles to kind of give it a more lively feel to the slideshow. To do that, go up to a layer, new solid, and we'll name this particles. Click on make comp size and click OK. And the effect we'll use is called CC particle world. So we'll just search for that and drag that to our solids layer. Then up in the top left inside effects controls, we'll change some of these settings. We'll first change the birth rate to 0.3. We'll untwirl producer. We'll actually spread these out quite a bit by changing the X radius to 4.5 we'll change the Y radius to 0.53, and we'll leave the Z radius alone. We'll untwirl physics, and we'll actually change the velocity to zero, and we'll actually change the gravity to negative, so it's actually going up instead of down, and we'll change that to negative 0.05. Next, we'll untwirl particle. We'll change it from particle type line to actually faded sphere, and that'll actually make them into circles. We'll change the birth size to one, and we'll change the depth size to three, so relatively larger. And the size variation will change up to 100. That way they vary in size quite a bit. And the max opacity will actually knock this down to 25. That way they're just, you know, faded a little bit. You don't want them too obnoxious. And then we'll change the colors to some nice warm tones. We'll do maybe like a champagne color for the birth size. And then a nice orange amber color for the depth size. And now when we play this back, you'll notice that we have some nice sparkly bokeh overlay particles into our slideshow here. And what you can do to make this a little less obnoxious, you can actually click and drag this down underneath your photos. That way they don't also interfere with the photos themselves. They're just underneath it, adding some ambient type of kind of firefly type of look going on here. I don't know, I like this. So that's really how you create one of these scenes. And you know, this is basically the steps to actually create a scene. Really from here, you just duplicate scene one and just build out your other scenes that can include more photos, maybe different positions, you know, animating the cameras, maybe making some adjustments to the light. But that's basically how to create this slideshow. Now I'm gonna fast forward and actually create two more scenes and show you guys how to actually link them together to create a completed slideshow look inside After Effects. Also, one other note, as you create your other scenes, if you double click on scene two, for example, you can easily replace these photos by just clicking on one of the photos and then clicking on your next photo and just draw, holding down option, clicking and dragging to actually replace that photo. So that's an easy way to just replace these photos in your scene here. All right, so now I have my three completed scenes here of family photos. And now to put them together, what I'm gonna do is actually collapse my photos folder, click on my comps folder, I'm gonna create a new final composition by just going up to composition, new composition. I'll name this final slide show. Make sure that the comp is 1920 by 1080. I'm actually going to change the duration to however many scenes I have. In this case, I have three scenes that are 10 seconds long, so I'm going to change it to 30 seconds. Then click OK. Then what I'm going to do is click on my first scene, hold down Shift, select the last scene, and just drag them in here. And now you should have them looking like this, all stacked. And what we're going to do to actually sequence them is click on the scene 1, then hold down Shift, and then select the last scene. The order that you select these is important and then right click, go up to keyframe assistance sequence layers, then check the overlap button. And then you can actually change the duration of the overlap. And if you remember your camera transitions, how long those were, in this example, it's 15 frames, but in your example, it might be a little bit different depending how you set them up. But just change the duration to however your camera transition looks in each of the scenes. And then check the drop down menu next to transition and then check dissolve front layer, then click OK. And you'll notice that these layers are automatically sequenced for you with an overlap transition. So you can see, say if we click on this layer and click U, it actually fades out and goes into the second photo here. And you might have some leftover space at the end, just click on the last scene, click O to go to the end, and then click N to actually trim your workspace and then right click on that workspace and go to trim comp to workspace area. And now your composition is ready to be rendered out. 
And if you guys wanna see how to actually render this out as a final video, be sure to go check this video out right up there. That'll help you guys finish this project. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.